Good evening. I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, the Real Money Doctor, and it's currently Tuesday, uh, May 19th, just a little bit after seven o'clock. And I want to touch base today on uh, the events that affect your ability to get, protect, and enjoy your money, your life, and your retirement. The thought for today is a fake crisis. We'll get to that in just a couple of minutes, though. Uh, the way we start every day is to touch base on what's happening with the current COVID cases. Right now, as of today, there is 1,523,000 cases confirmed in the U.S. Okay. Um, that's close to 20,000 new cases just since yesterday in the last 24 hours. The deaths now are officially at 91,000. 570. That's just in over not even 11 weeks right now. Okay. That's 1,380 people died. 1,380 people died since yesterday at seven o'clock when I came on and talked to you about these things. Now, it gets really interesting in that the number of people that recovered yesterday was 283,000. That number hasn't changed. And it's nice. It's, you know, 37,000 more since Friday. But overnight, the number of cases that have actually recovered has not really changed. New York State still has a number one uh, position with the number of cases that they have. Last night, or actually today, as of today, right now, they have 352,000 cases. That's another 1,400 since yesterday. They have 28,558 deaths overnight. Overnight. That's another 219 since yesterday. Now, New Jersey State has the second highest number of cases right now, 149,000 cases. Okay. That's another 1,100 since yesterday. Their deaths are currently at 10,439. That's 128 more people died in New Jersey overnight. Now, it gets sort of interesting, and I wanted to do this for the first time. I want to touch base on the other states, okay, top 10 at least, okay. So, Illinois has a number three position right now, okay. Um, Massachusetts is number four, okay. California has... 81,000 deaths or 81,000 confirmed cases right now. They're number five. Okay. Pennsylvania is number six with 67,000 cases right now. Now, Michigan is number seven. Okay. This is not the East Coast now. This is Michigan. We're moving a little bit more into the center of the, the nation a little bit more. They're number seven. They have 52,000 cases right now. Uh, Texas. Middle of the country, 49,000 cases, 49,000 cases in Texas. Florida has 46, almost 47,000 cases, and they've been cooking the books down there. Um, they're telling some people not to, to scrub the books, so their numbers are going to be on the lower side than what's actually happening. But that's where they're reporting right now. And Maryland rounds out the spot, number 10 spot, okay, with 41,000 cases. Now, there's still a lot of people happening here. A lot of cases every day. A lot of people are dying. And it's just not on the East Coast. It's just not on the West Coast. You got a number of states that are in the middle of the country that are having problems right now. And those problems are going to continue. It really is. And you don't really think about those states. Now, they're rising. Every day they're rising. And that brings me to today's thought for the day. A fake crisis. Um, it's not particularly funny, but I do want to mention this. Uh, actually, spend some time on it because a Florida man who thought the coronavirus was a fake crisis, okay, has changed his mind after both he and his wife contracted COVID. Now, Brian Hitchens, he was a rideshare driver who lives in Jupiter, Florida, downplayed the seriousness of coronavirus on his Facebook post in March and April. Okay, and he said, I'm honoring what our government says to do during this epidemic, but I do not fear the virus because I know that God is bigger than this. 
I'm, you know, will be forever. That's what he wrote in his post on April 2nd. Okay. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Okay, not a problem. It's okay to be religious. I don't believe in things. That, that's good. However, in mid-April, Hitchens, 46, began documenting his and his wife's health on Facebook. We've been home sick for more than a week. Both my wife and I are home sick. He wrote on a post on April 18th. I got no energy and all I want to do is sleep. A day later, April 19th now, okay, Hitchens and his wife, Aaron, were admitted to Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center. That's what he said in his Facebook post. Hitchens could not be immediately reached for comment on Monday because his voice mailbox was full. And in a lengthy post he had on May 12, Hitchens says that he was once among those who thought that coronavirus was a fake crisis, that he was blown out of proportion. The whole thing wasn't all that serious at all. Okay. That changed when he started to feel sick in April and stopped working. And he wrote, Hitchens said, he had just enough energy to drive himself and his wife to Palm Beach Medical Gardens Center on April 18th, where they were both tested positive for, for the virus. They admitted us right away, and we both went into ICU. I started feeling better within a few days, but my wife got worse to the point where they sedated her and put her on a ventilator. Hitchens said he never experienced the terrible aches and pains, but he felt weak and exhausted. He said he felt better on May 12th, at which point he'd been in the hospital for three weeks already, and he still had COVID, and the disease, you know, was caused by the virus, okay? He said he had pneumonia in his lungs. And as of today, my wife is still sedated and on a ventilator, still no signs of improving. That's what he wrote. And he continued. There were a couple of times that they tried to start weaning her off the ventilator, but as soon as they they did, okay, her oxygen level dropped and they had to put her back on the ventilator full time. He said his wife of eight years had been sick for quite a few times before in the past, but she's always fought through things. This time he said, I have come to accept that my wife may pass away. Hitchens, who had been unable to see his wife since they were hospitalized, said that he was not holding out hope that she'd really recover. This thing is, is nothing to be messed with. Um, so please listen to the authorities and heed the advice of experts. It's what he said. This thing is nothing to be messed with. Please listen to the authorities and heed the advice of experts didn't say politicians, he said experts, okay. We don't have to fear this by, by heeding the advice. It doesn't mean that you have to fear. It means that you're showing wisdom during the second epidemic time, okay. So he clearly says that, you know, it's not about the manly fear and we don't have to be scared of anything. It's just common sense, okay. Things are out of your control. Now in the May 12th post, in which he implored people to use wisdom, that has been shared more than 500 times. Now he says, looking back, I should have wore a mask in the beginning, but I didn't. Perhaps I was paying a price for it now. And if he'd passed the virus on to his wife, he says he knows that she and God forgive him. So just think about what I said. And if you have to go out, please use wisdom and don't be foolish like I was. So the same thing won't happen to you like it did to me and my wife. That's what he wrote. Now, Hitchens had one thing to say on his Facebook post on Monday to people who have sent him tons of nasty messages saying he deserved to die. He simply said, I am negative. Praise the Lord. Now, this is somebody who went through things. Lived in Florida and absolutely denied that this was real. Absolutely denied that this was real until it hit him and his family. And then things changed. So that's just something to think about. Now, the other thing I want to touch base with tonight is, you know, I don't know if you saw this or not, but you probably heard about it by now. President Trump declared to reporters in the White House that he'd been taking hydroxychloroquine 
for a week and a half. And supposedly it's, you know, purported to prevent COVID. Okay. So the president in a news conference, he came out and said, oh yeah, I've been taking it about a week and a half now. No problems. Moments later, he received a stern warning on the dangers of that much discussed possible treatment for, for coronavirus. And that warning came from none other than Fox News. Neil Convoto, a Fox News commentator, said about the president's remarks, that was stunning. The president of the United States, just to acknowledge that he is taking hydroxychloroquine, a drug that was meant really to treat malaria and lupus. The president is insistent that it has enormous benefits for patients either trying or to prevent already having COVID. The fact of the matter is though, when the president said, what have you got to lose? A number of studies are actually vulnerable uh, and vulnerable populations have one thing to lose, their lives. Okay. Now, this is Neil Cavuto. This is Neil Cavuto from Fox News. Okay. In his remarks, you know, Trump said, because I, I think it's good. The president said when asked why he's taking it, well, I, I've heard a lot of good things, a lot, of, a lot of good stories. And if it's not good, I'll tell you right. You, you know, I'm not going to tell you to get hurt by it. Okay. That's what the president said. Now, such remarks, you know, they're just a potent reminder of the views the president doesn't particularly engage with knowledge. Okay. Over the past week and a half, roughly the same period in, in which Trump says he's been taking the drug, two studies have emerged, casting doubt on the drug's efficacy uh, via, via, via the virus. All right. The nail was finally put in the coffin of hydroxychloroquine, according to William Schaffner, an advisor of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as he told CNN. One of the studies showed that patient, patients who took the combination of hydroxychloroquine and erythromycin, okay, were more likely to suffer cardiac arrest during the study period. Clinical trials are now underway and expect to produce a more definite and reliable uh, information about the drug and COVID-19. Citing heart rhythm problems, the FDA in late April advised the use of hydro against the use of hydroxychloroquine outside a hospital setting or in a clinical trial. Now, you may have remembered, I don't know if you do or not, probably about three or four weeks ago, but shortly after I got started doing these, these uh, shows here at seven o'clock, a couple had taken hydroxychloroquine. Okay. Man and his wife had taken it. They both ended up unconscious in record time within hours. She ended up dying from the hydroxychloroquine that they'd taken. But that was then. Okay. And they're still talking about it. It's an amazing thing. Now, you might not know that Trump has a common form of heart disease right now. And a, a small Brazilian study showed that chloroquine, which is related to hydroxychloroquine, was stopped in April after coronavirus patients taking the higher dosage of uh, chloroquine developed irregular heart rates that increased their risk of a potentially fatal heart attack. Now, according to, that was according to the New York Times. In a discussion of the dangers, Cavuta noted himself, if you are a risky, in a risky population here, and you are taking this as a preventative treatment to ward off the virus, or in a worst case scenario, you are dealing with a virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough, this will kill you. So again, whatever president, whatever benefits the president says this has, and certainly is, it has had for those suffering from malaria and those dealing with lupus, this is a leap that should not be taken casually by those watching at home or assuming that the president of the United States says it's okay. Even the FDA was very cautious about this unless a clinical a trial with safety built right into it was deliberately happening. I wanna make this not a political point here, but a life and death point to be very, very careful. This is Neil Cavuto now on Fox News. 
Now, as cable news hosts go, Kabuto is in the vanguard when it comes to disease and drugs. He knows from personal experience. Okay, you might not know, but he beat Hodgkin's lymphoma when he was in his 20s. In his 30s, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and has had open heart surgery in 2016. I have had a progressive disease, Kabuto told NPR in 2018. I'm not naive about it. It can compromise your voice. The nerve endings that, that feed your esophagus will just close up. I can't worry about that. I mean, I'll know what I know. And those are Kavuto's own words they directed at the president and anyone considering, you know, an evidence-free actions that he may have speak, uh, been talking about. Okay. And it, it's really sort of strange. I mean, he's got no evidence for this. It's just an aspirational thing. He would like these things to occur. Okay. And as the new you know, season is, is upon us right now, trying to put some credibility to hydrocoxychloroquine okay, as a treatment is just one of those dramas where it, it's just difficult to determine where Trump ended and the Fox News be, began. Now, Matthew Getz, Gertz, actually, of Media Matter reported that in mid-March, okay, when Fox News introduced hydroxychloroquine uh, and they started the hype at that point in time. Trump was essentially, essentially passing along the optimism in his coronavirus task force briefing, briefings. So they said it on Fox, and he went and said it in the briefings too. Okay, and programming that the prospects of hydroxychloroquine took on a feeling of, you know, evangelism. Okay, it was like you know, religion. It was going back and forth between the two, and each one just bandered up a little bit more. After sampling commentary from CNN cautioned that hydroxychloroquine was unproven against COVID-19, host Tucker Carlson, okay, watching people in the media talk down a potentially life-saving medicine because it has a politician that they don't like endorsed it, is probably the most shameful thing. And as someone who's done this for 20 years, I've ever seen. It's making a lot of us ashamed to work in the same profession as these other people. Okay, now. Pornia Cavuta, <laughs> he's got someone with firsthand experience with bad drugs, with bad heart conditions, with bad medical histories. And they're just jumping all over him. Okay. Every other person is just jumping all over him. And on and on it went in a circle of self reinforcing commentary. Following Monday's news that Trump was taking the drug, opinion hosts on the network and program, uh, counter program Cavuto, uh, San Hannity, Sean Hannity ripped the media mob into waging an unhinged, nonstop, never-ending PR campaign against him. They acted like the president and his hope for optimism was a drug and it was some type of mortal sin. Carlson said, I just have to say, it's very strange that someone's choice of medicine, okay, would be seen as a political story. And Laura Ingram's noted that, you know, television news anchors and Guests are constantly freaking out about this. Well, it's really, really more important to remember that Trump was speaking to reporters on Monday about the drug. I was just waiting to see your eyes light up when I said this, but I know when I announced this. Okay, so Trump's an interesting guy. Okay. For years, He's played the press. Okay. He had his TV thing. Um, the Apprentice loved the press. Even before then, when he was playing real estate in New York in his early days, he played the press. Okay. And now he continues to play the press, looking just to see what type of reaction he's going to get. Understand, this is who's in charge right now. So here we are. Start of week three. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Start of week three in May, actually. We're good 11 weeks into this right now. And by the president's own count, this is 11 weeks, but this actually started back in January. The weather is breaking across the country. And it's full spring in most places. And people are really eyeing up their summer. A few courts have already thrown out the extended stay orders from a lot of the governors. And that's going to continue. People are just itching to get out of the house and back to work if it's still available. And everyone is still thinking about reopening. And that's really a good thing. 
And while we're thinking about reopening, even with the 1.5 million cases right now and the over 91,000 deaths in just 11 weeks, I want to touch base on just a couple of basics here. One, to this day, there are still people out there that think this is some type of media hype and a vast conspiracy to cripple the economy and bring down President Trump. Those thoughts are constantly reverberating in the echo chamber uh, between the president and most of Fox News. Now, people can certainly think what they want. They're certainly entitled to that. I don't have a problem with that. However, try to convince the 1.5 million people that have already tested positive for COVID and the 91,000 people that have died from it. If they think it's just some type of hoax. These people are also free to try and explain their position to the families and friends and co-workers of those 91,570 people that have already died. I don't think those people want to hear the story. Two, President Trump is not a doctor. He does not play one on TV, and he has absolutely no medical training whatsoever. He does not social distance. He's not wearing masks, and he is not taking hydroxychloroquine. Understand, he is not taking that drug. The closest he may ever get to taking that is looking at the name on a piece of paper. Someone at his age, his obesity, and to us still unknown medical conditions, would die from cardiac arrhythmias. Okay, it's just that simple. Three, understand the president gets tested every day. Do you? Do you have any chance of getting a test every day? Okay. You have to be an at-risk worker and you have to be symptomatic in most places to be able to get a test. The president gets one every day. It doesn't matter. Four, right now, there is no vaccine. There is no treatment at this time. Now, even if the gods came down from heaven and we had a treatment or a vaccine before the end of the year, which is highly unlikely, okay, just please remember Brian Hitchens and his wife. On April 2nd, it was a fake crisis. By May 12th, him and his wife still on a ventilator, and he's not certain she's going to survive. Now are big believers that COVID is real. People are sick and people are dying. Do you really want to roll the dice and hope that you won't get sick before they have a treatment or a vaccine? Also remember that the president is not doing the things he's telling everyone else to do. He has very little to no risk of infection at all since he's tested every day. And before anyone gets into the White House, they're screened. They get their temperature taken before they get in. And again, if they get in sensitive areas, okay, their temperature is taken a second time. People in the West Wing are required to wear masks. The president does, it, but all the staff is all wearing masks. We're surprised. Now, as the reopening continues, okay, and it will, understand that you are putting yourself and your families at risk. The more you try to get back to normal, whatever that normal might be, okay, please keep your social distancing and wear a mask when you're out and about, okay? This has been really, really rough for a lot of people financially. It has been. For other people, it's just been a mere inconvenience, okay? If you're 50 plus and you were thinking about retiring at some point, this just threw a monkey wrench into that plan completely, okay? Your plan A just got destroyed with this thing, okay? Whatever savings you had for retirement plan, which is probably not enough to begin with, that just got wiped out by 20, 30% or so. Now, that might come back a little bit, but do you have that kind of time? You need a plan B right now, okay? One that puts you in control of your money and your life. Now, I may be able to help with that, Okay, go, go, to, go to drrousenow.com, um, see what you think, and if I can, let me know. I'll be glad to discuss it with you. It's that simple. Now, I'm Dr. Fred Rouse. I'm the real money doctor. My only goal here is to help you get, protect, and enjoy your money, your life, and your retirement. So, whoop. so I look forward to seeing you tomorrow around 7 o'clock. So I've got some strange alarms going on right now. Thank you.